Hello and welcome to my new video! Today I'm going to show you how to sew a stunning parachute dress. Hello guys, today I'm starting a new project and it would be a beautiful lining dress. Let me show you the fabric. This is the color of the fabric and on camera it looks like it is a carrot color, but uh, in reality it is a dark mustard color, a gorgeous one and I'm so excited to start. Let's go! First, I made a mock-up of the bodice to be sure that everything would fit me right. It was okay, so I washed the fabric and pressed it as I usually do. And I was ready for the cutting. At this stage I cut two front and two back bodice pieces. The pattern has the seam allowances already included in it, so it is very simple to use it. I also cut four side small rectangle pieces four large side parts and two button stands and, of course, transferred all the marks to the fabric. Don't forget to put some letters on the pieces indicating its upper, left and right edges for future yourself, so you won't be confused later. Then I cut one front and one back part. All these pieces are cut aligning the fabric grain line, by the way. But it is opposite with the self-made binding tape. It should be cut diagonally. And that's it, let's start sewing! First of all, I sewed two back bodice parts together with a 1 cm seam allowance. Then connected the back piece with the front bodice parts right sides inside, at their shoulder edges, and then at their from underarm to the side edges, all with a 1 cm seam allowance. I also used an overlock for hemming. After that I pressed the seams flat and then pressed the central back seam allowance to the side and the shoulder seam allowances to the front parts. As usual I used my homemade pads to help me flatten the seams. When stitching together and hemming the underarm edges, I try to unbend the curve a little bit. I 
I press the seams flat and then turn the seam allowances to the front. We should also fuse the interface into the wrong sides of both button stands. Then I cuffed our sleeves by 1 cm to the wrong side, using the chalk lines I'd drawn earlier and repeated the process once again, so there were no raw edges to be seen. I also folded our binding tape in half, wrong sides inside. I pinned the cuffs for convenience and stitched them down with a 1 cm seam allowance. Then I attached the binding tape to the neckline right sides and side and sewed them together with a 1 cm seam allowance. I marked the back's center for convenience. Don't forget to check that the neckline wasn't stretched and then trim the seam allowance down to 5 mm. As usual, first press the seam flat and then turn the seam allowance to the binding. It is also worth to cut the seam allowance of that seam at several places, so the thing won't wrinkle when turned out. I stitched 1 mm away from the seam line on the binding, thus attaching it to the seam allowance. Then folded it on the first seam line and secured the thing by hand, tucking the other edge of the binding under, as shown in the video. I stitched 1 cm away from the edge and then removed the hand-stitched seam. After that, we should pin the bodies to the button stands, stepping 1 cm off its upper edges. Stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. I drew chalk lines that would help me bend in the button stands. I pressed the seams flat and then turned the seam allowances to the button stands. Then folded them to the wrong side and pressed carefully. I also drew a chalk line 1 cm away from the inner edge of each button stand, so it would be easier to tuck these edges under.
our next step is doing the button stands upper edges neat. So I stitched with a 1 cm seam allowance, trimmed it down to 5 mm, turned the corners out and pressed. And then stitched on the button stand 1 mm away from its inner edge, pressed and repeated the whole process for the other side. I decided to make the buttonholes and sew on the buttons at this stage. There were four of them in the pattern, but after trying the bodice on, I decided to add one extra button in the center of the button stand. And now the time has finally come for making the skirt. I pinned together big rectangle parts using my marks that showed the dress's side seam edges with their right sides inside, stitched with a 1 cm seam allowance and hemmed the edges. Then repeated the process for the smaller rectangles. Press the seams flat and then turn the seam allowances to the front pieces. Then I stitched two parallel lines 7 and 15 mm of the upper edge on the bottom big rectangular piece and made together. Repeated it for the second piece and connected them to the smaller upper rectangles with a 1 cm seam allowance. I also hem the edges with an overlock. Then press the seams flat and turn the seam allowances upwards. My next step was not to confuse myself with a lot of dress parts and connect the central front and central back parts with the right and left side pieces using the marks with left on fabric earlier. I sewed them all together, attaching one by one with a 1 cm seam allowance. Then hemmed the edges. As usual, I pressed the seams flat and turned the seam allowances to the central elements of the skirt. Now you watch me stitching two parallel lines once again, but now at the waist edge of the skirt. Although I stitched them not all the way around at once, but divided into two halves stopping and starting again at the side seams. Thus it would be easier for me to make a gather later. When I'm happy with how the gathers look, I pin the skirt to the bodice right sides inside and sew them together with a 1 cm seam allowance. Pay special attention to the place where the two button stands coincide. The one that has buttonholes on it should be between two layers of fabric when stitching, and the upper one when the dress is turned out. 
I did it wrong at first, so I had to unsew that place and then stitch it once again. After that I hemmed the edge, pressed the seam gently, trying not to touch the gather with an iron, and then pressed the seam allowances upwards, except the place where the button stand was, there I turned it downwards. Our last step is hemming the bottom of the dress. I used a 6 cm wide cardboard piece to draw a chalk line at the wrong side. Then folded the bottom edge to this line and pressed. After this step I pinned the edge to the skirt and tried the dress on. Everything was ok, so I drew another line, this time 2 cm off the edge, tucked the raw edge to it and then pressed once again. I stitched 1 mm off from the upper folded edge and pressed the seam. Don't forget to remove all the still visible stitches we made earlier to make gathers. And that's it! Thank you very much for watching! If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button. See you in the next video! Bye!